thank you, Amanda, and thank you, Ms. Lee, for being the soul of this beautiful day of lectures. So, I'll begin with this one. On the screen, uh, displayed on the screen, are images of the Camera Santa, the Holy Chamber, the treasury of the Cathedral of Oviedo, an 8th century building that has survived thanks to its conversion to an architectural reliquary. The treasury was built in some point between the reigns of Asturian King Alfonso II and Ramiro III to house a collection of relics and reliquaries that confirmed the ties between the older Visigothic kingdom and the new Asturian monarchy, right at the start of the reconquest of the southern lands taken by the Muslims. Probably built alongside the apse of the 9th century church dedicated to the Savior, the Camera Santa cannot be used uh, as a comparandum to establish the possible architectural models of early medieval Iberian treasuries. It is a unicum because of the reasons it, of it was built, the type of building it was, and why it was being conserved. From 11th century on, there are, however, some sure features and consistencies within the architectural the architecture type of the cathedral sacristy, which varied in its form and placement. First, there were usually two sacristies. The first was a small structure adjacent to the main altar with cabinets, cabinets to store cult objects. It could be located in the chapels behind the main apse, behind the main altar, or in the subsidiary apses flanking the main apse. These areas might also be the site of a larger sacristy that housed a bigger collection of cult objects, including liturgical books, and which played an important role in the liturgy because it was where the clergy dressed, where relics from the treasury were stored temporarily, and where the processions that inaugurated religious services began. In an apse with an ambulatory, the location of the sacristy could vary from the chapel close to the altar to separate the structures connected directly to the main apse, or more usually, a detached space off of the transept. Treasuries were simply an expression, an expansion of the space of the sacristy into an independent structure, a protected space whose purpose was to safeguard the most precious possessions of the church. The architecture of the treasury could also vary from forming an integral part of the sacristy to being an architectural dependency more or less protected in an upper story. To an independent building whose sole purpose was to be a protected space that communicated directly with the main apse. <clears throat> in most cathedrals with ambulatories, the sacristy was located in or gave on to one of the Ramitian chapels, which established a connection between the sacristy and the main altar through a pair of doors that were often monumentalized and which framed the transition between the space that facilitated the liturgy and the presbytery itself. Indeed, the metal grills and doors that close off the entrance to the ambulatory seem to be sensible means of protecting the sacristy, the main altar, and the tranquility of liturgical processions. Processions began by moving from the sacristy to the altar, following the same path taken by relics in their journey from the treasury to the presbytery. This is a basic point about the celebration of the liturgy. Inside the sacristy, the priest dressed as the dressed as he uh, recited secret of private prayers that readied him to officiate the Mass. Upon leaving the sacristy, the route between the sacristy and the presbytery was transformed into a sacred path framed by decorated doors. The Puerta del Cardo, it is, in the ambulatory of the Cathedral of Leon, faces the ambulatory chapel that served as sacristy and that was expanded at the same time as the doorway in the 15th century. In Toledo, Python, the implementation of uh, the architectural link between the presbytery and the sacristy can largely be attributed to the figure of Cardinal Pedro González de Mendoza, died 1495. Although it has scarcely been a century since the completion of the beautiful stone ritual choir, Mendoza sought to close off the space behind the presbytery adjacent to the ritual chapel of Santa Cruz and also asked the cathedral chapter for a space to the north of the main altar, adjacent to the first pillar of the ambulatory for his burial site. Both the recent completion, the recent completion of construction, as well as the importance of the burial site, requested gave the chapter post. Upon Mendoza's death, 
his successor, Francisco Jimenez de Cisneros, oversaw the completion of the project under the supervision of the chapter and delegates of Archbishop Mendoza, among whom was Queen Isabel. It has been suggested that the location chosen by Mendoza, by Rafael de Mendoza, was a sign of his arrogance. So perhaps this was not entirely the case. He chose the space that communicated between the main altar and the sacristy, which was, at that time, the first chapel in the north of Bulletory, where the chapel of the Virgin of the Sagrario was later erected. It would seem that the model for the funerary monument constructed starting in 1503 was a large, double-faced screen defined by two lateral doors. The new altar of the Holy Cross, which preserved the dedication of the Gothic Victor Chapel that had been taken apart when the tomb was built, was uh, facing the ambulatory, while Mendoza's tomb was built towards the main house. To a certain extent, the model chosen respected the original idea of the cardinal, who in 1494 indicated that his tomb should be formed by a large arch with a grill between the main house and the side chapel of a or sacristy. In any case, the finished tomb provided a magnificent frame for the processions of the officiant and his minister at the start of the Mass. Turning back to the architectural uh, type, beginning in the later Middle Ages, independent spaces connected in one way or another with the apse of the church were built to building, oh, were built, sorry, to function as sacristies, often with a treasury in the upper story. There are several early and specially significant examples of this type of structure, such as the cathedrals of Burgo Yosma, Avila, and Huesca, dated respectively to the 13th and 14th centuries, whose perfectly regularized formal and functional characteristics lead us to think that they are representatives of an established type. The sacristy of Burgo Yosma probably in complement to another structure located in one of the apses of the early cathedral, was conceived as a monumental space adjoining the north transept whose uh, two-story function as a sacristy and a treasury. Another independent sacristy was constructed in Avila in the 13th century between its unusual transept and the aisles of the cathedral. Part of this structure survives, survives as, and was incorporated into the fabric of the cloister. At Huesca, where the church was built atop the site of a Christianized mosque at the end of the 13th century, a two-story axillary space, an old sacristy topped by a treasury, was built between 1506 and 1508, adjoining the eastern side of the southern axis of the cathedral, and it was expanded with another big building just behind the main chapel during the 16th. At this point, it is possible to speak of the architectural type of the sacristy, which would enjoy such popularity in the coming centuries. That is, a building with a rectangular plan, with large arcosolia and lateral walls, and which armories and chests for the storage of liturgical objects would have been located, along with a sacrarium, a fountain, with its basin for ablution, descendant of the piscinas originally, originally located in the abscess, where the priest would wash himself and the objects used for the mass. Moreover, these new sacristies, perfectly planned from the start, were also able to include an upper story that could serve as a treasury or dwelling place for the guardians of the sacristy. In Tarragona, the older sacristy located between the apse and the canon's cloister was remodeled, creating a new two-story space that functioned as a treasury and the living quarters of the treasurer, with its own window that enabled him to keep watch on the entrance and even defend it. Indeed, the Valencia, the Valencia revolt of the Germanias prompted the treasury of the cathedral to be secure with a monumental door with a portcullis, much like the fortified entrance to the city, which impeded access to the sacristy and treasury of the cathedral that, let us not forget, had housed the king's collection of relics since the reign of Alfonso V of Aragon died in 1458. Between the 15th and the 16th century, the concept of the sacristy as an independent space 
persists in both newly constructed buildings as well as remodeled ones. The late Gothic sacristy <coughs> of the Cathedral of Camora was conceived as an extremely complex two-story place surrounding and taking advantage of the stereo shapes of the apse. In the case of the surprising late Gothic construction of the apse of the Cathedral of Cuenca, the ambulatory necessitated, necessitated, necessitated sorry, the construction between 1493 and 1518 of a complex space serving as the main sacristy, in which underground basement helped resolve the uneasiness of the area and which was accessed via the southern side of the ambulatory. This was the first dependency in a complex sequence of spaces pertaining to the cathedral chapter that surrounded the east part of the exteriors of the cathedral. Here is the big sacristy, and here the chapter house. In Santiago de Compostela, the old absidal sacristy uh, maintained its antiquated form, and a new space needed to be built within the cathedral cloister. The reconstruction of the cloister provided the opportunity to construct a sacristy, temporarily established on the site where a new chapter house was to be built, and which came to be known as the lower sacristy, as opposite to the upper sacristy behind the main altar. The most sumptuous complex of chapter buildings built during the Spanish Renaissance are those of the Cathedral of Serio and a series of dependencies among which was the sacristy and the living quarters of the treasurer, protected with a spiral constructor for firearms. How did, the, how did this sacristy treasures, treasures look? That is to say, what is the internal appearance of these sanctuary storage spaces? We would not be mistaken to think that these, of these as cabinets of curiosities containing everything from relics and liturgical objects to books and vestments, usually organized into chests and drawers, on some, or sometimes installed in cells that were built into the walls of the building itself. We get some idea of these spaces from inventories and descriptions of visits to sacristy's treasuries. At the beginning of the 20th century, José Villamil y Castro, Galician man published an indispensable collection of inventories of cathedral treasuries from the 13th century onwards, which gives us a great insight into this topic, topic and opens up possible avenues of study. The inventory of the cathedral of Girona, Girona written down in 1470, is especially a rich in detail. It lists the large ark enclosed by two grills and secured with two keys, in which most of the most precious metalwork objects of the chapter were housed. Out of this ark was a silver casket enclosed by two doors. There were also metalwork objects in an armor, and the bishops, amictus, and a book describing civic processions were contained in another smaller chest. The main custodia was kept in a large armoire, while diverse other pieces were not enclosed in containers, but were nevertheless meticulously described. In front of these cupboards containing liturgical objects were another five pieces of furniture, as well as a sixth mounted on to the wall, containing the vestments worn by the clergy, or used to adorn chapels, altars, images, pulpits, or core stalls. Amidst all of these objects, we also find the metalwork cathedral of the bishop used in ceremonies as a symbol of episcopal authority, as well as a theatrical pieces used in representations of the resurrections of the resurrection or for the host of the day on Corpus Christi. A lectern for the readings performed during the Holy Weeks at the main altar, the columnar <laughs> Pascal candelabrum a chest with the flags and standards used during the processions of the corpus and during the probation days, and finally, the carpet that covered the story's chest in the sacristy where the corpse were kept. Moreover, the library of Bishop Joan Mayari, donated for use by his Pius Foundation as school for car boys, was also restored in the treasury. 
the treasury also housed a box filled with money referred to in 1463, while cathedral documents were kept in a chest in the chapter house. Is this, if this description of the cathedral of Girona was not evocative enough, Oviedo is the clearest example of a treasury whose architectural form ended up conditioning the form of the cathedral as a whole. As I referred to at the start of my paper, the Camera Santa, holy, the, the chamber, as it became known thanks to its rich collection of relics, was built on the south side of the cathedral complex its placement conditioning the construction of the 14th and 15th centuries part of the cathedral transept, where processions exiting the relics or crosses granted to the cathedral by the early medieval Assyrian kings would start or finish. In the modern period, a balcony In the modern period, a balcony was opened up on the south transept of the cathedral near the access, access point for the Camera Santa on the second story, from which point the Holy Shroud, one of the cathedral's most precious relics, was displayed. Combining a relic and a balcony for its display was a long established custom. There, from a point of view created for just its function, the relic shown to the faithful. In the Christianized mosque of Caerni, there was a likely there was a there was likely a site from which the Santo Rostro, the Holy Face, the treasure's most important relic, was displayed. In the 16th century, a balcony was built in the new cathedral just for just this, this purpose. In Coria, a large stone balcony was built next to the north portal of the cathedral where the relic of the holy table cloth from the Last Supper was displayed, to be adored by the faithful. Can we interpret the balcony in the north facade of the cathedral of Coimbra along these lines? They are all monumental sites for exceptional celebrations, from that of the Eucharist to preaching or public display of relics. We should not separate these three functions which often work together. In the context of the display of relics from balconies and pulpits, at the north sides we find large relic relics built into walls that enable the display and the protection of the relics. Although we do know, although we do not know much about how it functioned, a small chamber was erected above the boards of the south ambulatory of the Cathedral of Valencia to contain the relic of the Holy Third, which had arrived to the city in the 13th century. This space was deliberately built to be difficult to access and could be reached only by a tower several meters above the ground of the internal wall of the sacristy. The reliquary was embedded into the wall and surrounded by a cycle of Gothic paintings that refer to the Passion. Alas, we know nothing on the ceremonies celebrated around this space. Finally, in Leida, Leida the remodeling of the cathedral apse in the 14th century included a large pictorial cycle on the north wall divided into scenes depicting, depicting stories from the life of Christ. In the image of the Nativity, a hollow space was constructed to restore the relic of the holy swaddling of Christ. The curious, almost surrealistic object of particular devotion in the cathedral. Much, much less like we saw uh, in the case of the Holy Throne in Valencia, the holy swaddling in Lerida must have been removed, sorry, must have been removed from its inward reliquary and have been displayed and adored at a specific points of the cathedral and its surroundings during the liturgical year. The topography of relics and their cult also had an impact on the urban setting of the cathedrals outside of the church itself. In Hakka, 
it would seem that since the 15th century, an elevated structure built in the cemetery surrounding Diaz was the site where the body of Santa Rosia was displayed by a bishop during celebrations of the patron saint. Uh, of the patron saint. This is a photograph done uh, in 1895, uh, and we can still find this late Gothic structure that was preserved until the beginning of the 20th century, and it was sadly demolished to reconstruct in a not very beautiful architecture the surrounding <laughs> the east end of the cathedral. Of the cathedral. In some, the sacristy and the treasury in medieval Iberia display different architectural types and topographical models, always conditioned by the circumstances of each cathedral chapter. And I think that's really important. In addition to the possible ways of cataloging their architecture, the functional principles that unify these spaces change it to emphasize the role as actuary structures for the liturgy, containers of precious objects, and the first stop in a liturgy that dispersed the relics and displayed them throughout the cathedral and its surrounding area. In this sense, the sacristies and treasuries were spaces that created their own cult uses, endowed with their own liturgical ceremonies. Thank you very much. Thank you.